oil on canvas painting is a portrait of Lucy Ellis Tisdale, painted around 1830. It is one of three portraits of Lucy Ellis Tisdale here in the Old Colony History Museum's collection, all painted at various points in her life. The artist of this painting is officially unknown as it is unsigned, but some scholarship has attributed it to be the work of Jane Stewart. Jane was the daughter of famed portrait artist Gilbert Stewart and began her own painting career at the age of 16, so while it is possible, more research is needed. Lucy was born in the very early 1800s and was the daughter of Benjamin Ellis of Carver. She wed Samuel Trescott Tisdale in 1825, and the pair lived in Taunton and raised their family here, including a daughter, also named Lucy Ellis Tisdale, who donated this portrait to the museum in 1908. Located in a historic old colony town, Cape Cod Picture Framing and Restoration was the perfect choice to repair some of the damage this painting has endured over the years. In May of 2022, Ron Lindholm, the owner of Cape Cod Picture Framing and Restoration and Art Rescue, arrived at the Old Colony History Museum with his truck to pick up the portrait and with the assistance of curator Bronson Mashad, off she went. The portrait spent the next few months being meticulously cleaned, relined, and repaired. we were able to stop by for a sneak peek during the process to learn a bit more about how paintings are restored. Today's virtual visit takes us to Cape Cod Picture Framing and Restoration in Dennis, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Ron Lindholm. I'm the owner of Cape Cod Picture Framing and Restoration. I've been the owner for 45 years. And this is Peter Lindholm. He's the head of the Custom Framing Department. Tracy Lindholm, who is me, who is the uh, head of the, the Restoration Department. And this is Jess Norton, and she works with Pete in the Framing Department. We're located at 780 Main Street in Dennis on Route 6A. Cape Cod, and we're open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 till 5. We are uh, high-end custom framers, and we do a lot of specialty work. The, the custom framing business these days has turned into uh, a business of specialty work, mostly. And uh, so we also have a business called Art Rescue, uh, where we go into a fire, flood, or a disaster, pick up all the artwork, take it to one of our facilities and fumigate it to prevent mold and mildew from growing. And also the fumigation eliminates the odor of a fire so that we don't return the artwork to the client smelling like the fire. And uh, so that's a uh, pretty involved. There are always a lot of pieces. There's a lot of uh, soot. And so that's why we have another facility that we do most of that work in. We'll show you the custom framing department and then we'll go into the art restoration studio where Tracy will uh, show the painting that she's been working on for the uh, museum in Taunton. Computerized mat cutter, where we cut and design most of the mats for specific pieces. Um, this is the dry mount press. Uh, certain pieces we mount to flatten the artwork or the posters. And this is our assembly benches over here, where we put most of the stuff together. <laughs> Thank you. 
So we have the painting in progress right now. Um, it has been relined, uh, which is to attach it to a new backer. We take uh, Belgian linen canvas and we coat it with what's called reline wax. It's an archival adhesive um, synthesized for this process. And um, we take the wax coated canvas and lay it down on our, our reline table and we lay the painting on top of that face up. The table heats up and melts the wax and we vacuum the air out so you end up with an airtight seal between the old and the new canvas. The benefit to the wax is that it goes through and floods the gesso layer of, of the painting so it's providing a new backing for tears and holes but it's also um, stabilizing the painting throughout and um, that is all about longevity, you know, preserving the painting for another hundred years. Once that was done, the painting was stable enough for us to, to do the cleaning. To clean a painting is to use a combination of chemical solvents that will remove everything from the surface of the paint without removing any pigment. Um, Every painting is different. The solvents that we use vary pretty significantly depending on how old the painting is, how soluble that original paint is, uh, what type of varnish was used, what environment it, it existed in, um, be it a, a basement or a home with a coal heat or a wood stove. Um, so Painting, the cleaning is done in tiny little blocks um, because we're always checking to make sure that we're not removing any pigment and some colors are more soluble than others so um, it's good to just always be checking. Um, right now you can see it's got a little bit of a patchy finish from the cleaning that will change when we put the new varnish on. Um, the new varnishes that we use are uh, have UV blockers in them so they stay clear indefinitely where the older organic varnishes darken when exposed to UV light uh, which is why a lot of the older paintings are very dark because as they darken people will move them into more light which causes them to darken more so um, it, it, it's nice to have those those new varnishes that will stay clear and the new varnishes are designed to be easily removed so it's one benign solvent removes the varnish it can therefore be replaced um, so it's really a nice protective layer for the painting from here what we'll do is use um, gesso to fill any any tears there's really not that many tears on on this painting a couple little a little spots um, and once they're filled flush, we'll mix the, the different pigments together to match what's there. Interestingly, on this painting, it had been relined before, um, which I have the canvas. This is the old relining. And in the old relining, um, what was used for the adhesive was hide glue. Hide glue is water soluble. So um, when the painting was in a humid environment, that high glue started to bleed and um, came through the front of the painting. And um, I've been in the process of removing it, but you can still see these little brown, you know, there's like this, this dripping on it. Um, that's from the, that old relining high glue bleeding through the front of the painting. So my very next step on this, which is what I'm doing now, uh, is to soften that high glue and then use a scalpel to, to gently remove it. And um, so far, I've done quite a bit of it. There were a, there was a lot of it dripping dripping down the front, which 
you'll see in the in the before photos of, of the painting. So it's coming along beautifully. I'm really happy with it. We were able to use those original structure bars. I'm really pleased. I'm looking forward to it being being completed so that everybody can appreciate it again. So we're removing the hide glue um, from the old relining that had had bled through um, in times of humidity and so forth. It, it tends to look like somebody splashed soda on it or um, something that's on the surface, but actually it's coming from behind from that old relining. And really the only way to dress it is to gently scalpel it off to remove it. Uh, anything else, you know, it is water soluble, but you can't use water on an oil painting because gesso is also water soluble. So you can really destabilize a piece uh, using um, a water-based solvent which is why when we when we clean a painting the the solvents that we use are solvents that evaporate very quickly so they don't permeate that 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 paint layer and get into the gesso uh, of course now that this has been wax relined it is it is far more resistant to water damage um, but we don't want to put anything on the painting that's not good for it so scalpel is the safest bet so this is just this is just to give an idea of um, what it will look like when it's varnished you can see the cleaning um, does dry it out a bit so the the varnish will recondition that um, so those those colors really just come out so crisply. And the varnishes that we use are satin, but it this it will be the color. You can see the um, what the the hide glue left behind been scalpeled off here, but gonna have to in paint it just a little. There's another, that's another spot. The hide, hide glue does tend to just cement itself to the paint mm -hmm. and there's really nothing you can do but scalpel it off and, and impaint it on, underneath. Um, it's still better to get rid of it so, so you don't have people saying, who spilled something? Yeah, both of these. A lot of the time that goes into it is like making the reline canvas, yeah. stabilizing the, you know, and gluing. Cleaning is the the exciting, pretty thing to look at, but it really only begins like halfway through the project. frame restoration in, in progress and as you can see our, our frame restorer Shannon Davis has cast some molds of existing corners and um, filled them in and, and she's got them in place right now. Once she replaces all those missing pieces she will um, 
seal it and match the finish to the the finish of the the frame itself um, she takes these molds in and heats them and um, presses them onto existing uh, pattern and when that cools she she pours the mold into it and then when that dries um, she removes it and you have a cast of um, the the missing piece, so you can you can see that it's imperfect. Before it is applied to the frame, she'll get rid of all those little imperfections and then secure it to to the frame. Um, there's quite a few areas that she's already done, and before she begins any of that uh, replacement, she goes in and injects a uh, an archival adhesive into all the little cracks of the frame and that that's a that's a pretty significant portion of the the time that goes into this is going and stabilizing the frame throughout so that um, pieces don't continue to come off in the future so that's all been done here and I think she has most or all of the molds made, so things happen pretty quickly from this, this point. In August 2022, she returned to her home on the wall of the Old Colony History Museum's gallery. We unveiled the portrait on August 10th at a special event to thank those who donated and supported the project. This project was made possible by those who generously donated to our 2021 annual fundraiser. So generous, in fact, that we exceeded our original funding goal to restore the painting. We were able to have the frame restored as well, and both needed a lot of work to be returned to their former glory. Today, you can visit Lucy in our first floor gallery to see how beautiful she turned out for yourself.